here, as we have talked about through the year, to me is the great barometer of what's happening with inflation. And yes, it's a food commodity, but it's a food staple. And it also represents food that people eat for comfort food, right? Because sugar is not only in everything, but it's when people are feeling pinched economically, they'll reach for something not so healthy that contains a lot of sugar because it's cheaper. So really all of this to me just means exactly kind of on the heels of what we talked about, even with people wanting more money, is that sugar is representing even though it's weather related, kind of similar to what we saw in the 70s when sugar took off in 76, came back down, and then again started to take off in 79 into 80. It led the charge in a lot of inflation at that point. So that's kind of what we're seeing. It went from five cents, well, in 2019 at the end to into 2020 before COVID to where it's trading now, which is close to 27 cents a pound, that's a tremendous rise. And that's way beating the rise of inflation numbers. So people might not notice sugar when they should be, but what they do notice is what we are seeing when it comes to oil and energy and, and gasoline prices. And do you have any expectation that we are going to see any kind of give back in the prices? Because, you know, we, we talked about this a lot as well. And with OPEC saying, OK, we're going to keep going for another three months. and basically them having all of the positioning when it comes to being able to set prices now that there's no SPR left. Do you, do you see any downside here? At some point, but not now. Any correction had, that has come in the energy and oil market in the last few weeks has been very shallow and, and, and opportunities to add to the market. That was a huge breakout once we got through that $80 a barrel. And we're hitting here at close to 90 But we have another hurricane, by the way, coming into the U.S. And depending, and, and they're talking about Category 4. So depending on where it hits, if it hits in any place near the refineries, that will be another boost to the oil price prices. There's been some real policy mistakes, I believe, with the fact that we let our reserves get down really low. And of course, even though people think at some point this, the demand will be squashed, which will bring down the price of oil. Yeah, maybe at some point that makes sense, right? Everything being cyclical, mm -hmm. but that's not happening right now. So, so on that front, and I suppose a little bit sideways, but all the same in terms of nat gas, you're liking Henry Hub at around about that 280 mark? I think it's so undervalued. And in fact, before I came on, I was reading that Australia, the LNG workers are going on strike. That's a direct relation to natural gas. But I also believe that at $2.50, that seems compared to oil at $90 a barrel, ridiculously cheap. Um, so there could be some level of switch to a natural gas, which would be cheaper, at least for the time being. Demand is starting to rise a little bit back in Europe. And again, any disruption of really cold winter, which considering Mother Nature hasn't exactly been behaving herself, I can imagine we'll see a really freezing winter after an incredible hot summer Natural gas to me looks like you have a very limited risk to the downside and a lot of upside.